Hello everyone. I thought I'd do another quick video on photo editing. This is the second video I've done, um, but the first one I waffled on way too much and it was way too long, so I'm gonna try and do it again, but do it as quick as possible and with as least talking as possible. So I'm gonna go straight to it. This is a photo I took of a cattle egret at Twycross Zoo about two or three months ago, and it's kind of in flight. The original, well, the photo I've took is a bit overexposed. So I'm gonna try and correct all that, correct the background, delete all the netting, um, and try and get an okay image out of it. It's not gonna be amazing, but I'm just trying to show you what how you can kind of salvage some of your photos that weren't nailed. So first thing I'll do is I crop it, crop it to roughly where I want it to, so roughly around there. Um, click done. Maybe that's a bit too much, I think. So I'll undo the crop angle on that, but just by pressing Control and Z, I'll crop again. something like that I suppose and click done straight away you can see by using the histogram that it's blown out the highlights are way too much so I'm going to lower the highlights right down and bring out bring up the shadows going to raise the exposure a little bit probably bring down the highlights a bit more and maybe touch the whites up a little bit um, Add a tiny little bit of clarity. I'm not going to worry with the texture. Maybe just touch the exposure up a little bit more. Um, that'll do me for now. What I do then is I right click and edit in Photoshop. So that opens up in Photoshop. And then I'll click on background here at the bottom and duplicate the layer. Now what I want to do now is I want to blur all this background out, all this netting. So I'll come up to the tool here, the object selection tool, and draw a box around the bird. That should highlight everything that's, or the main subject in there, which it has. Um, there's a bit here that it's highlighted that I don't want, so by pressing Alt and drawing a box around that, it should delete it. Sometimes it deletes it all really well, other times it has a bit of a mare. But if it has a bit of a mare, you just kind of delete as much as you can uh, and sort it out after, which I'll show you how to do. So you can't pick that bit up because it's too small. Generally, I try and get as much, make sure that it's got the majority of it all in. Then I right click on that and layer via cut. And what that does is on the layer one, that becomes the cut. So that's just that object. And the background copy is all of it apart from that cut object. So by to remove the background, what I do is I'll go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And then I raise the radius of here until it blurs in enough to the amount that I want. So say somewhere like that and click OK. While I'm still in this mode, if you zoom in, you can see sometimes it, it still doesn't blur everything in that well. You get all this kind of artifacting or whatever it is down the sides. Now, the way I get rid of that it doesn't always do it, but sometimes it does when you're trying to deal it. I've found it does it when you're trying to get rid of like cages in the background. So if I use the clone brush, and um, quite a big brush, and I lower the opacity to 24%. And if I'm trying to clone out anything on top, I pick a point using Alt above. So you click where you want to clone from there, Hold down Alt and click that, and then just paint or dot 
on the affected areas. You can raise, sorry, that's dimming light and it should be normal, but it won't really make much difference for this part. So I just go around, so it's, if it's underneath, I click from underneath, grab that kind of whatever's there. As I said, my first video, I talk way too much. So I'm just trying to rush through this as quick as possible just to give you an idea how, it's, how I do it. Uh, something like that and now I don't actually like this brown in the background at all this fence so I'm going to try and clone that out as well so exactly the same kind of way but just pick from over here and clone over the top of this fence obviously watch the size of the the brush because it will pick up the corners Once you've kind of got to that point, you see a bit, right, a bit here around the wings that needs a bit of tidying up. So you do exactly the same thing, but zoom in a little bit more. Zoom in a little bit more and make the clone brush a lot smaller. Because it's part of the mask and it's actually masking the top layer. If I merge these two layers together now, so I hold control, so shift, highlight the two I want, then right click and merge layers. And now I've got layer one. I'll duplicate that. And then I'll just use the clone brush and just go around the edges and clone that black bit out. I'll lower the brush and carry on doing that around the edges of the bits that aren't that good. Just generally go around the pole bird to see if there's any bits that aren't that need that aren't that need tidying up a little bit more. But it's not too bad. It's done a pretty good job of the the mask. Obviously, the more time you've got, the more time you can spend on it, the actual tidier and cleaner it'll all come up. But I'm just rushing through this as quick as I can. Um, something like that. So once that's done, what I do then is I go into, I flatten all that and then save it which what what that will do then is it'll open it back up in Lightroom so once it's gone back to Lightroom um, I have another little bit of a mess around with the colors just to see just to get it to roughly where I want if I actually just pop back into Lightroom sorry into Photoshop um, and duplicate that layer again you've got at the top under image you've got auto tone auto contrast and auto color if you have a mess with them they sometimes sort it all out for you straight away with regards to your color so if i just click on auto contrast it puts too much dark in the background but you can lower the opacity and i always find roughly 50 percent is enough but that's still too dark how i want it so i don't want that so i'll try the others just to see I've got a feeling it's all going to come out too dark. Yeah. So maybe if I 
try the auto contrast again and lower it a little bit. about 22% you can see it's made it pop a little bit more so I'll stick with that go to save and again that will open in Photoshop sorry in Lightroom and once it's done that what I like to do then is I go into right click Go to edit in and edit in Topaz Denoise. That opens up and it gives me four options. It gives me clear, original, low light, severe and the standard. But I always choose low light. I find it gets rid of most of the noise without making it too blurry. It still keeps it sharp. Um, and I think I always get think clear always sharpens it too much. I know you can adjust it, but I just generally pick low light. So I'll click that, and what that does then, it removes all the noise from the picture, and it actually does sharpen up the, the image as well. So that's sharpened that up. Um, there's not really a lot I can do with the colours. I could, I could select the subject. And invert it, which means I'm now only messing with the background and I could oh, it just raise the exposure a little bit. Which is a little bit better. It's a little bit brighter. I don't want to do it too much because there's still dark bits around the edge of the bird, which I'd have to go back into Photoshop and lighten all those up again. I don't want to do, do that. Um, and it's got a tint of a blue that I don't like, so I'm just going to lo lower the blue a little bit. Um, and I think that's maybe all I'm going to do with this photo. There's not really a lot. It's not a brilliant photo. It's not a brilliant capture. Um, so I'm not going to mess around with it too much. At this point, all I'm going to do now is I go back into Photoshop. So if I close that one down, I'll go back into Photoshop now for the last time. And once that's opened up in Photoshop, then I'll use the Sharpen tool and I will just sharpen over some of the areas that I want sharpening. But just bear in mind that it's already kind of been sharpened in Topaz Denoise. So you don't want to overdo it just a little tiny bit. And if I duplicate the layer now, I always duplicate the layer at this point in case I just want to go back. I'm just going to burn some of the shadows in by using the dodge and burn tool. Um, I keep it kind of low exposure and I'll just burn a little bit in here and there and then I'll highlight and then I'll use the dodge tool in the same way to highlight some of the areas that need highlighting such as the eye mid-tones so if I just click on the eye oops dragged it down at the end that's that's about it really with this photo that I'm gonna do um, flatten the image and save it open it back in Lightroom and as you can see that's kind of all I'm going to do for this video. I would spend a lot longer on it, getting the colours exactly how I want them, spending a lot more time sharpening bits up and um, making sure it's not looking so sharp and around the edges. Um, but just for comparison, 
this is where we started off and that's kind of what we've got now which like i said it, it kind of comes out a bit of a, a better image to what it was um one thing i will quickly show you is sometimes it kind of like looks a bit too sharp around the edges but you can or just lower the contrast a little bit which will soften that up and then it also gives you a little, little bit more leeway to maybe raise the exposure a little bit more as you can see um it wasn't the best image to start with but it's come out a lot better so that's it that's uh, the little bit of a tutorial and i hope to save a crap photo um, I hope it's been some help and I haven't waffled on or gone too fast, but that's roughly how I'd do it. And But as I said, spend a lot more time. Um, yeah, if there's anything else you'd like to see or how I do, roughly what I do, just uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.